What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC video. Now, I, I don't even know if I can call this a Sword and Shield video. This is this is like a Gen 8, Gen 9 combination video. Uh, so basically, Scarlet and Violet are roughly six months away. In fact, I think, yeah, six months on the dot, five months on the dot, uh, because today is the 16th and I believe they come out on the 17th, whatever, give or take a few days, but we're close to Scarlet and Violet. Um, Here's the thing, Sword and Shield had a mechanic called Dynamax and Gigantamax, which would double your HP and for three mer three three turns, I don't know why I said three mervs, three turns give you um, moves that were heavily increased in power and also had a guaranteed secondary effect of increasing your speed, special defense, attack, whatever or it could debuff something. Or for Gigantamax, they were special. It would set up like uh, the same effect of, uh, of Sand Tomb. It would set up uh, a new effect called Rocks on the Field or uh, or Coals on the Field, Fire on the Field, Vines on the Field. There was a lot of different things. Uh, and a lot of Pokemon were designed with this mechanic in mind. And a lot of them were balanced with the mechanic in mind. So what I wanna talk about today is how a few Pokemon are likely gonna need to be rebalanced for uh, VGC in Gen 9, and who knows, these Pokemon might not even make the cut, uh, but I think even for future generations where Dynamax isn't a thing, these are Pokemon that need to be uh, given a look, and I'm going to be putting forward some ideas as to how they can be balanced, uh, but this is overall going to be like a, a discussion video. I want to hear you guys' opinions in the comment section down below. Do you think these Pokemon need to be nerfed a little bit going into Gen 9, or do you think they're fine the way they are? What are your ideas? Uh, but yeah, let's go, to get, let's go ahead and get into it. If you guys enjoy the endpoint in time, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily VGC content. Let's go ahead and get into it. So, Zacian. Zacian is the quintessential I was made for Dynamax Pokemon. Even though it can't Dynamax, it and Zamazenta are not capable of Dynamaxing, along with Eternatus, but I think Eternatus is perfectly balanced to be honest. So, their main deal is uh, they're able to hold these items called the Rusted Sword and Rusted Shield that give them the stats that you see here. Also on switching they get plus one attack stage and they have access to uh, Behemoth Blade uh, and Behemoth Bash. Obviously I think the only one here that seriously needs to be um, nerfed is Zacian and I would argue Zamazenta actually kind of needs a buff so let's go ahead and talk about that. So Zacian has 170 attack and 148 speed, very fast, uh, absurdly fast even, like given what we've had in the past, there's only a few Pokemon faster than it, and none of them really compare to the power uh, that Zacian puts out, except for Calyrex Shadow, which is, it'll, it's a lot easier to deal with when Dynamax is gone, to be honest, uh, especially given uh, there's going to be a lot more normal and dark types in the metagame when Zacian is not like you know, the best Pokemon ever. So hopefully we can give it some nerfs. I would say there are a few options when it comes to nerfing this. Behemoth Blade is a very, very powerful move. However, if, if we take a look at all the steel moves that this thing has access to, uh, I, I think that there's a better way of going about this. So we need to make sure Behemoth Blade still has some kind of special property without being useless you know because because special moves tend to have one thing going for them uh, i think the only pokemon that has like a, a signature move that doesn't really do much for it is kiram uh is kiram right because it has icy wind which is 55 base power 95 percent accuracy lower speed by one and it has glaciate and that's like it's crappy special move uh it has 65 base power so it's 10 points stronger and has less pp so obviously you know it's it's better in that situation exclusively um uh, but yeah, like it's it, we need to take into account the fact that this move still has to be special. Uh, if we take a look at the move Iron Head, Iron Head is the move that Behemoth Blade is based off of. If you don't know, when you attach the uh, Rusted Sword to Zacian, it's Iron Head gets turned into Behemoth Blade. So Iron Head is 80 base power, 30% chance to flinch. I think that if we want to have Zacian still have access to Behemoth Blade, um, then there's like a very clear answer as to how to nerf it a little bit. I, here's a thing that a lot of people overlook. When when Dynamax is gone, Zacian is already effectively nerfed. The value it brings to a team significantly decreases because it, it's basically a second Dynamax when Dynamax exists. When Dynamax doesn't exist, um, even though it's still absurdly powerful, it's not like anything could Dynamax to 
deal with it better anyways. In fact, Dynamaxing in front of a Zacian is pretty much asking to be KO'd uh, since it deals the same damage to you regardless. So that's the thing. If you weren't going to beat it when you weren't Dynamaxed, you weren't going to beat it when you are Dynamaxed. Basically, what I'm saying is Dynamax being gone already makes Zacian a little bit less useful um, and a little bit less centralizing. So what we could do to overall lower its power level, despite the fact that it is less useful without like completely breaking it, putting it into the ground, is I think Behemoth Blade should be a 95 or 90 base power move. And rather than having a chance to flinch, um, we could have it, I don't know, be sort of like Sacred Sword, maybe, or actually, you know what, that wouldn't even be a bad idea. Maybe it would, maybe it'd be a little bit broken, maybe, because it has Sacred Sword, right? It's a 90 base power fighting move that ignores stat changes, why not make Behemoth Blade a similar thing? Why not make it a 90 base power steel type move that ignores stat changes? Uh, or, even, you know, if, if you want to make it less reliable, I guess you could make it a 90 base power steel type move that has a chance to crit. It could be like a slashing move, because... Slashing moves tend to have a high chance to crit Leaf Blade, uh, Slash, Night Slash, Psycho Cut. Those are all high crit chance moves, so that could be an answer. Basically, what I'm saying is overall, it just needs a slight decrease in power. A lot of the developers, I think, are scared to give it a special move that is less than 100 base power, because that's very rare. Origin Pulse is, I believe, 110 or 120. Um, is it 110? Let me see. I always forget. Kyogre. Origin Pulse, yeah, it's 110. Precipice Blades, I believe, is also 110. Uh, so, I, you know, even though it's not above 100, like most special moves, we should still probably decrease it a little bit. Um, I think that would just help out Zacian with being balanced outside of Dyn Dynamax so much more. Or the other option, which I think is probably the worst option, is just remove the Rusted Sword entirely. But that would also remove the Rusted Shield. And granted, that does kind of make Zamazenta a little bit more notable. Uh, compared to Zacian because it's basically a fast fighting type uh, but yeah I think Zacian those are my ideas for it I don't think it needs any direct stat decreases it could get a stat decrease but that would just be kind of weird like 160 attack I think would help out quite a bit um, but yeah anyways moving on to Zamazenta this is what I argue I would argue needs a buff and while this is going to be mostly a nerf video uh, I think that this is the one that definitely needs a buff. If anything keeps its crown form, it should probably be Zamazenta. And my only thing that Zamazenta needs to be better is for one, either A, give it access to body press like it should have had from the beginning, or B, make Behemoth Bash work like body press. That is all. Make it work like body press. Make it seal type body press. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Uh, next up is Regieleki. Now, Regieleki is a Pokemon that is pretty scary. Uh, its ability is Transistor, which it makes its attacking stat multiply by 1.5 while using an electric move. So it's basically like adaptability on, not even adaptability, it's its attacking stat. So its special attack will turn from 150 to, what is that, uh, half of 150 is, what, 75? So it turns into like 225. Uh, so both of these stats turn into basically like 224 or something, or 227. I think is like the number you end up at. I don't know. I'm bad at doing math in my head. Uh, physics degree does not help you out with arithmetic. Anyone who has gone into STEM will let you know they're bad at basic math, good at hard math. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Regieleki, I think that's its main issue. It doesn't need a speed decrease. It's transistor. That's the big thing. I honestly think that had they given it like clear body like every other Reggie, we wouldn't be having this conversation of if it's broken or not. It's mainly the fact that Electroweb is not only amazing speed control coming off of a base 200 speed Pokemon, but it's also hitting like a truck when you slap a magnet on this thing and give it max special attack. Like that is an absurd amount of damage for what is a spread 55 base power move that also slows you down. It's just too reliable, uh, especially in doubles. And it, it, the fact that its ability multiplies its attacking stat by 50%, edges out Tapu Koko, a Pokemon that should hypothetically be a little bit stronger because it has, you know, well, it has like a lower special attack, it has a higher attack stat, um, and it has Electric Surge, something that, you know, it summons Electric Terrain, which prevents sleep and multiplies electric moves by 1.3, I believe, in this gen. Um, it, it has a slightly different niche, but it's I think it should still hypothetically be hitting harder. I think that if we're going to balance Regieleki, we need to really take a look at Transistor, which is its special ability. I think that with 200 base speed, the main issue is Transistor. Um, its stats aren't like abhorrently bad. It's it's the 200 base speed that really breaks it, but it's, it's only broken when you combine it with a heavy damage output. So I would say 
Uh, you could either take away Electro Web, that'd be a huge nerf to Regieleki as far as like balancing it goes, but it also takes away what really makes it like super reliable. I think Transistor is the main thing. So either take away uh, Electro Web or take away Transistor, um, or make Transistor like 1.2. So it's still super fast, but it's not stronger than like Tapu Koko. And I think that's that's the main issue I take with it is that it, it edges out another legendary Pokemon to the point where it's become almost like unknown. Uh, but yeah, Urshifu, these two I think are the biggest culprits of we need to be balanced in a non dimex format. Uh, so Urshifu has the ability Unseen Fist, and this is the easiest fix to anything in the game. Here's my idea for how Unseen Fist should work. So in Gen 7, um, we were able to use Z-moves, and Z-moves had their damage, it was either quartered or sixth or something, it was heavily cut, but they would hit through Protect. So you could use these Z-moves to take out something behind a Protect if it was like on a Focus Sash, or if it was like just that close to getting KO'd, you could use it to secure a KO in that way, but it wouldn't deal full damage, despite the fact it is a super powerful move. I think that if we want to make Unseen Fist still be a very useful ability, uh, but not break these Pokemon, apply the same multiplier to it. The only reason these things work in Dynamax format is other Pokemon are broken, so they just kind of destroy it. Zacian is like a huge reason to not use Urshifu Dark, and a Regieleki is a huge reason not to use Urshifu Water. They, they have like so many checks in Restricted, but in non-Restricted, we've seen them dominate. Uh, and that's that's just like the fact that the only thing that can defend themselves versus these things are Dynamax Pokemon that max guard. And even then, if they're Gigantamax, bam, don't care about your max guard. So that's kind of funny. Um, but for the most part, they're only balanced because Dynamax Pokemon can protect versus them and they have double health. So that's a big thing. If you want to balance them, make that multiplier or make that like a negative multiplier, the divider uh, a lot or just apply here. So if an Urshifu in a non-Dynamax format were to attack a, let's go with the Tapu Koko, like a protecting Tapu Koko with a Wicked Blow, it wouldn't be taking 30%. It'd be taking like 10%, which is still very important. You can't fully protect yourself from it. It'll bust through your protect, but it'll still do a decent amount of damage. So yeah, I think it still gives them a niche. It still makes them super powerful, but it doesn't break them. Same with Urshifu Water. I think it just needs the exact same treatment with Unseen Fist. They're the same Pokemon, basically, just with a different typing and a different move. Um or in different moves. But yeah, that's my big idea for them. Just give a multiplier to Unseen Fist. Now, Reggie Draco. Reggie Draco is my baby. I love Reggie Draco. In my opinion, uh, it doesn't need anything changed when Dynamax is gone. When Dynamax is gone, you guys are going to understand how busted this Pokemon is. Here is, is my opinion on Reggie Draco. It's perfect just the way it is. It's bad now because of Dynamax, and I wanted to throw that in there. It is a perfectly balanced Pokemon, but it's only bad with Dynamax. Here's the thing, this is a Pokemon that's going to be very good once Dynamax is gone because you can slap on a Choice Scarf, or you can slap on a Dragon Fang, or you can slap on a Life Orb, whatever you want. Point is, this thing with speed control does absurd amounts of damage. I think that if, if Regieleki is going to get Transistor nerfed, don't touch Dragon's Maw. This is the only thing holding Reggie Drago together. Dragon Energy is basically Dragon type Water Spout, Dragon type Eruption, whatever you want to call it. The fact that this thing gets Dragon Energy with this 50% multiplier and the fact that you can tack on, let's go with like a Choice Specs or a Choice Scarf. I think Choice Scarf is probably the better one. It gets weaker the, the lower the health it gets, but it's still so strong. Yes, you can switch in a Fairy type. Yes, you can switch in Tapu Fini and absolutely, you know, make this thing useless. But not every team has Tapu Fini. And even if you switch in a Fairy type, the thing next to it's going to get blown up. I think it's perfect. I, I just, this is one of the best designed Pokemon stat wise that we've gotten out of Gen 8. And it's so funny that we got a Pokemon that would be perfectly balanced in non Dynamax format, mid Dynamax format, where everything else seems to be just be balanced to be as broken as possible. So, yeah, that's my little Reggie Drago TED talk at the end of this video. Uh, I didn't really have like a script planned out for this video. I had basic ideas I wanted to talk about. So, maybe at some points I was a little bit rambly. Uh, but I hope you guys get the point of what I'm trying to get at here. If we look at the stats, Zacian is at 63% 60, usage because of just how useful it is. I think Grimstone is still going to be fine in non-Dynamax. Uh, Regieleki is at high usage because of that insane speed control and the fact that it's also a very solid Dynamax Pokemon. Yes, because of Restricteds, we don't see as much uh, Urshifu. But it still exists, you know. Uh, but yeah. That's that's my uh, my little spiel for today. I'm going to be heading out to Milwaukee tonight. Uh, so if you guys are going to be at Milwaukee Regionals, uh, let me know. We can probably meet up. I'll try to do like um, 
uh, a fan of the channel meetup and we'll take a picture and put it on the community tab. So yeah, if you guys enjoy, leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.